Many people claim to have seen a mysterious light known as Teach's Light. This light appears on the Pamlico Sound of Ocracoke Island at a place called Teach's Hole. The legend goes that one night, the notorious and fearsome pirate known as Blackbeard, whose real name was Edward Teach, was at his favorite hideaway in Ocracoke Island. There, he was hosting one of his frequent and extravagant parties with drinking, dancing, and large bonfires. The party lasted for days, and several North Carolina citizens sent word to Governor Alexander Spotswood of Virginia. As soon as Spotswood heard of this, he sent two ships, commanded by Lieutenant Maynard and crewed by the Royal Navy, to defeat Blackbeard once and for all. On November 22, 1718, the battle began. A fearsome battle ensued with many deaths on both sides. Although Maynard had more men, Blackbeard knew the seas. Blackbeard steered straight towards a sandbar, only changing direction at the last moment, which tricked one of Maynard's sloops into crashing. Maynard knew he couldn't beat Blackbeard at sailing, so he sent all of his men below deck. This successfully fooled Blackbeard into thinking that they had all perished beneath the waves, so he and his crew boarded Maynard's ship. When Maynard's men ran out to meet them in battle, the pirates were taken completely by surprise. Yet Blackbeard and his men fought on, despite their terrible wounds. The legend says that Blackbeard himself suffered five brutal and bloody gunshots and twenty gory cuts with a sword. Blackbeard continued to fight fiercely, and just as Blackbeard would have delivered a blow to end Maynard's life, one of the British soldiers came up behind him and slit his throat. They cut off Blackbeard's head, hung it on the bowsprit, and threw his body overboard. It is said that Blackbeard's head then roared in a ghostly and eerie voice, Come on, Edward! while his body swam around the boat three times before sinking to the bottomless depth of the sea. To this day, there are people who say they've seen the strange glowing light at Teach's Hole, the place where Blackbeard died. This light is now known as Teach's Light. They say that Blackbeard's ghost is still out there, searching for his missing head. And when the ghost floats on the surface of the ocean, it causes the strange glowing light. During violent storms when the wind blows inward, people say they can hear his voice yelling, Where is my head? So who really was Blackbeard? Did he die such a bloody and dramatic death? Was he a real person? Where was he from? Although Blackbeard was certainly a real person, his past is completely shrouded in mystery. We know very little about Edward Teach's youth. We know very little uh, about Blackbeard's life, his former life, uh, growing up, uh, even where he's from. Based on the expansion of the American colonies, as well as important trade routes, Bristol was likely the birthplace of the notorious pirate, sometime around 1680. It was common for pirates to create a new identity before setting out on their hunt for fame and fortune, and Blackbeard was no exception. Though he's referred to as Edward Teach, it's likely that his last name was originally spelled Thatch. However, despite the spelling, it was still pronounced Teach and later the spelling evolved to match the pronunciation. Though he is now thought of as one of the most ferocious and bloodthirsty pirates, Blackbeard was likely not excessively violent or gruesome. He was not that bloodthirsty, if at all. Uh, in fact, that's been one of the things that has come down through the myths and legends and folklore of this pirate. Despite this, Blackbeard was still considered by some to be the spawn of the devil because of the mystery surrounding his past and the ominous nickname of Blackbeard. According to A General History of Pirates by Captain Charles Johnson, Edward Teach was known as Blackbeard because of his long black beard that stretched all the way from slightly below his eyes to his waist. He made smoke wreaths appear around his head by either putting ropes or slow-burning can infuses under his cap. This ominous nickname contributed to the idea that Blackbeard was a terrifying, larger-than-life pirate. Over the past 300 years, it's that nickname that draws the attention. If it was just pirate captain Edward Thatch or Teach in these documents, in these books that was being written about and published and discussed, you know, it would go down like Bartholomew Roberts or, uh, you know, some of these other pirates, Edward Lowe, Steed Bonnet, et cetera, et cetera. It just would not get the airplay that it gets today. 
But when you say Blackbeard, all of a sudden people's ears perk up and, oh, really, Blackbeard? Well, what was that all about? Furthermore, he and his crew were extremely skilled at attacking and capturing enemy ships. They would attack merchant ships and steal all of the goods on board, sometimes even taking captives if Blackbeard believed that they could get a ransom. Based on historical reports of his attacks, Blackbeard would usually attack either at dawn or dusk in order to catch his victims unaware. Blackbeard would also raise the country flag of the ship he planned on attacking so that the crew would lower its guard. His true pirate flag was not hoisted for the victim ship crew to see until seconds before the attack. Blackbeard stole his first pirate ship from the Royal Navy and named it the Queen Anne's Revenge. He ran the ship aground right off the beach line at Beaufort, North Carolina. His shipwreck has been the subject of intense historical and archaeological research centered at East Carolina University. Interestingly, many say that the shipwreck of the Queen Anne's Revenge was not an accident. Blackbeard was extremely cunning, and the evidence shows that Blackbeard may have purposefully abandoned his broken ship in order to abandon most of his crew and therefore cheat them out of their shares of the plunder. Blackbeard's battle tactics, mysterious past, and ominous nickname all contributed to making him one of the most notorious pirates of what is now known as the Golden Age of Piracy. What about the actual legend of Blackbeard's death and the events leading up to it? During his time on Ocracoke, Blackbeard did, in fact, often take breaks from piracy to throw rambunctious parties that would last for several days. Many other infamous pirates traveled long distances to attend the extravagant parties that Blackbeard would throw. The legend is actually true in that it was at one such party that Blackbeard met his bloody demise. The ghost story description of the events leading up to Blackbeard's death are surprisingly accurate, which is perhaps why the legend has persisted so long. It was during a particularly boisterous party that nearby North Carolinians reported Blackbeard to Governor Spotswood of Virginia, who sent Lieutenant Maynard out to capture and kill Blackbeard. According to this letter written by Lieutenant Maynard to his superiors, Maynard states, I sailed from Virginia to the 17th past with two sloops and 54 men under my command, have not guns but only small arms and pistols. The 22nd, I came upon Captain Teach, the notorious pirate. He would neither give nor take the quarter. Immediately, we engaged Blackbeard. The letter goes on to describe how the battle was bloody and there were many casualties on either side. Maynard states that he had 20 men killed and wounded. Surprisingly, even the seemingly fantastical description of Blackbeard's actual death is accurate. Maynard clearly writes, Blackbeard fell with five shots in him and twenty dismal cuts in several parts of his body. Maynard concludes the letter almost ominously saying, I have cut Blackbeard's head off, which I have put on my bowsprit to carry it to Virginia. I should never have taken him. So what about Teach's leg? The light has been witnessed by many different people over the years, though many of them have turned out to be fairly unreliable witnesses or their story ends up contradicting itself and changing. However, Dr. T.P. Bonner's account of his experience with Teach's Light is extremely detailed. He describes Teach's Light as a ball of fire as large or larger than a man's head sailed back and forth from Plum Point, the location of Teach's home, to Archbell Point all that night without any deviation from a direct line while the wind was blowing at a rate of 40 miles an hour. This happened during every violent storm. However, there is no concrete scientific or historical evidence for the existence of Teach's light. And I'm pretty open-minded and agnostic about the whole thing, like I am ghosts. I've never seen one. I don't necessarily disbelieve that they're out there or can be out there on another plane of existence, uh, looking at it totally scientifically. But again, show me the evidence. These sightings tend to occur during storms when the ocean is typically unpredictable. The coast often gets bouts of strange weather, which results in the strange phenomena that some have interpreted as ghostly. 
Well, there is not yet a definite scientific explanation. The lights could be reflections of lightning, uh, boats in the storm, or lanterns of people walking on the beach. Despite this being the most logical explanation, the legend of Blackbeard has been so prevalent throughout history that many are quick to attribute any strange coastal phenomena to Blackbeard's ghost. There are many different reasons why this ghost story of Blackbeard haunting Teach's Hole and causing Teach's Light may have started. During the time of Blackbeard, people, particularly sailors, were very superstitious. Well, sailors in general have always been a superstitious lot uh, and still are. Uh, I'll get my hand smacked going out on the boat to work on this project if I pull a banana out of my little lunch kit. Uh, that is a superstition that some captains will, and, and, and whistling. You, you, you're not supposed to whistle on board a vessel either. Apparently that would whistle up, that the, the, the act of whistling would uh, bring forth high wind. In addition, there was also this idea that Blackbeard was this larger-than-life character and that he could not possibly be dead for good. Since then, a combination of oral stories passed down and a misunderstanding of facts versus fiction has contributed to the development of the legend of Blackbeard's ghost. As with so much folklore, and legends and myths uh, surrounding historical figures, historical events, just people literally making it up, uh, parents telling kids bedtime stories, uh, they remembering that and not really knowing whether their parents were telling the truth or not and they took it for the gospel and you know they continue to pass down those types of stories. I think that's where a lot of it is. You know, there's, and you have another adage, you know, uh, a lot of times there is a grain of truth in some of these myths and, and legends and folklore that started out as legitimate, but then kind of got wrapped up with embellishment over the years. Uh, I think certainly Blackbeard was a very probable candidate for, for a lot of that type of thing. So how does this ghost story fit into the modern understanding and interpretation of Blackbeard? Most people do not really believe the ghost story of Blackbeard haunting Teach's Hole. It is dismissed by most authors, researchers, experts as really just mere fiction. However, as the popularity of Blackbeard grows, so does the ghost story. Blackbeard has become a household name and a steadfast icon in both our local and national history. This notion of Blackbeard, the ferocious pirate, can be seen everywhere in all different types of media. Blackbeard is deeply seated in culture worldwide, and as such, he appears in fiction of all kinds. Whether he's appearing as a character, as a name, or, well, just a reference to the concept of him. When Blackbeard's the name, well... The character is an important one. Sometimes, Blackbeard himself appears as a character, often exaggerated, often unrealistic, but always a character who demands respect. Sometimes, Blackbeard just uses a name, one to prove that a pirate character deserves to be respected and feared. Sometimes, he's used to prove how terrifying something is. If Blackbeard's afraid of it, well, you should be too. Well, 
Blackbeard the pirate, you know for what he's feared. It's mostly for the dark, imposing color of his beard. He saw the beast and now nobody's scared of him because... His beard turned white and all agree he looks like Santa Claus. We see the story of Blackbeard's ghost cropping up in all different sorts of ways. In this popular song entitled Blackbeard's Ghost, we hear about a man who, under inebriated conditions, believes that he's finally seen Blackbeard's ghost. Cause I saw Blackbeard's ghost in the fog of Oak Coke Like a rainy Sunday morning back in 1704 was he looking for his buried treasure? His broken heart from long ago Cause he left both off the coast of Pamlico And some say they see the lights flickering on the sound He's out there every night Trying to chase the devil down The popularity surrounding the mysterious Blackbeard can be seen in paintings, songs, the numerous historical documentaries, video games, comics, action dolls, Halloween costumes, and even major films such as Pirates of the Caribbean, all of which are based on Blackbeard. Because Blackbeard himself is so popular, people are eager to visit places like Teach's Hole, even if they do not really believe in the ghost story. However, the mysteriousness and excitement surrounding the idea of Blackbeard's ghost possibly haunting Teach's Hole is definitely a contributing factor to the huge local enthusiasm for preserving places like Teach's Hole. From Blackbeard exhibits and pirate specialty shops, to scheduled tours and scale models of Blackbeard's ship, the tourism draw, and thus economic value, is massive. Because of the large historical information recorded about both his life and death, visits to places like Teach's Hole and the official Blackbeard Museum can even advertise as educational activities and opportunities for school field trips. The coastal community itself has also taken Blackbeard as a form of identity for the community. There are various identifiers in the community, such as a well-known hotel in Ocracoke called the Blackbeard Lodge, and a weekend-long event entitled Blackbeard's Pirate Jamboree on Halloween weekend. Blackbeard's haggard face can even be seen on signs and souvenirs around town. All of this reveals the emphasis within the community placed on both the legend of Blackbeard and his ghost story. It has become part of their collective identity and provides them with a sense of unity and even a sense of pride. We've utilized it as an excuse to have a yearly pirate invasion, uh, which is just really an excuse to, to drink and carouse and <laughs> uh, eat good food and basically just have a street festival. But it's not celebrating the aspect of piracy itself. It's celebrating the fact that all of these people have come together in one place at one time and are having a good time. And I think a lot of the locals are very proud of the fact that we have this major world-class archaeological project sitting right out here off of our coast. In addition to the community factors and tourism draw, there's also an enormous amount of historical and archaeological research relating to Blackbeard. However, since there's very little evidence for Teach's light or Blackbeard's ghost, and because there are a lot of logical explanations such as reflections of people's lanterns or reflections of boat lights, there's not a lot of research relating to the actual phenomenon of Teach's Light or Blackbeard's Ghost. However, there's enormous amounts of historical and archaeological research relating to Blackbeard himself. Experts such as Nicholas Graham, author of The Life and Death of Blackbeard the Pirate, and Kevin Duffus, author of The Last Days of Blackbeard the Pirate, have dedicated numerous years to uncovering the truth of Blackbeard's life and death. In his book, Kevin Duffus analyzes different myths of Blackbeard and attempts to unravel the truth about where he came from and even things like who his family was. However, some of the most intense research is surrounding Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. The shipwreck is located less than a mile from the shoreline at Atlantic Beach and is at a depth of only 20 feet. At East Carolina University, archaeologists like Eric Farrell, 
Nathan Henry, and Kimberly Kenyon are working to uncover the remaining portions of the Queen Anne's Revenge. The prevalence of Blackbeard's legend begs the question, why are we so interested in him anyways? Why is his legend and ghost story still popular hundreds of years after his death? There are likely several contributing factors. Like we mentioned before, his ominous nickname, battle tactics, and people's general superstitiousness all contributed to making Blackbeard extremely popular even during his own time. As the years went on, people continued to pass down the story of Blackbeard while embellishing and exaggerating parts that seem to make him even more interesting. This, of course, includes further promoting his mysterious ghost haunting Teach's Hole. Today, we continue to be fascinated with the story of Blackbeard because there are so many different aspects to his story. There's the ghost story, there's archaeological research surrounding his ship, there's even historical investigation to try and uncover his true past. And due to movies such as Pirates of the Caribbean, there's also this ever-present air of mystery and intrigue surrounding the idea of pirates. So why does this story even matter? It is important to understand the history and the context surrounding ghost stories like Blackbeard because they can affect the way we view actual history. Currently, the ghost story of Blackbeard haunting Teach's Hole is not widely believed to be truth. Most experts and even amateur hobbyists disregard the story and prefer to focus on researching the rich and fascinating true history of Blackbeard. You know, truth can be stranger than fiction. Uh, and so we've always thought, I've always thought, that the story of Blackbeard is, the true story of Blackbeard is as interesting as, as so much of the folklore and the myth and the legend. However, a slight danger in the ghost story of Blackbeard is that people may begin to characterize or stereotype Blackbeard and the idea of pirates. People often get so caught up in the ghost story and haunting that they do not take time to find out who Blackbeard really was. Experts like David Moore believe that one solution is to promote the actual history of Blackbeard in new, exciting, and engaging ways. For example, the Blackbeard exhibit at the North Carolina Maritime Museum in North Carolina includes things like detailed models of the Queen Anne's Revenge and interactive booths that allow people to learn more information about Blackbeard. Additionally, labs such as the QAR lab at East Carolina University also host frequent open houses where people can come in and see firsthand the history surrounding Blackbeard. These engaging types of exhibits gather large numbers of people every day. This further helps to promote the truth behind Blackbeard, rather than an inaccurate and romanticized version of his life or death. In the end, this ghost story does more good than harm. Though many people know about the ghost story, and it may cause some to misunderstand the rest of Blackbeard's history, most people have the logical reasoning and critical thinking skills to analyze these ghost sightings, and most of them have come to view the ghost story as more of a fun and spooky bedtime story. Meanwhile, the legend and ghost story has drastically increased the popularity of Blackbeard and acts as a massive tourism draw at places like Teach's Hole in Ocracoke Island. Like I stated before, because Blackbeard is such a central figure in the social culture of places such as Ocracoke, his ghost story can actually help build feelings of community and act as a uniting factor. Furthermore, the prevalence of his ghost story and our general fascination with Blackbeard can, in some ways, tell us more about our current society than about Blackbeard himself. According to Daniel Schmote, author of Pirates on the Chesapeake, our obsession with pirates stems from the fact that they are exotic, unusual, sexy, and their stories are exhilarating. Schmutz states that movies and books about pirates allow us a peek at our darker sides. Pirate stories and ghost stories are fantasy with an edge. Not only does this ghost story tell us about our current culture, but it can also reveal values and beliefs of the culture in which the story originated. Based on an analysis of primary sources and an understanding of the cultural context of that time, the idea of Blackbeard haunting Teach's Hole likely started with the disbelief that someone as ferocious and larger than life as Blackbeard could really be dead. 
According to experts such as David Moore, the ghost story was then likely propagated by a mix of superstitious values, religious beliefs, and a widespread cultural acceptance of the ideas of ghosts and spirits. Why do you think the story of Blackbeard and the Queen Anne's Revenge matters? I think all history matters. Uh, the fact that this also is dovetailed into an archaeological project which gives us actual physical, tangible evidence to go along with the history of Blackbeard, his crew, pirates in general, uh, just makes it that much more interesting. Uh, you know, those who do not study and understand history, you know, are doomed to repeat it. Our efforts to understand history, to study and research history, I think is certainly an effort to understand ourselves. In the end, it is critically important to promote the true history of our past. However, it is also equally important to understand the history and the context surrounding ghost stories like Blackbeard because of the valuable information it can reveal to us about our present culture and our past values. These stories matter, and will always matter, because they offer us a piece of ourselves and our history. There is a house built out of stone Wooden floors, walls, and windows. Sound.